likely to be in Australia, the original Brexit. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, uh, I, uh, I had a breakup recently and I tried to conquer the funk by uh, going to the gym, right? But I ended up making things significantly worse. Uh, I went to spin class, right? But it wasn't until this particular day I realised my favourite bit about spin class is that bit at the end where you stagger off the bike, you lock yourself in a toilet cubicle and you just start pissing blood. Oh, I love that bit. It's so manly, isn't it, fellas? And I get back to my flat and my flatmate's like, right, you should see a doctor, but I'm trying to be all cool. I'm like, nah, mate, I'm fine. I don't need some jumped up Oxbridge quack to tell me when I've cycled my dick off. Eh? <laughs> it's a normal injury, mate. It's like tennis elbow, yeah? Classic case of spinner's cock. Oh, <laughs> fucking dip it in a bucket of ice. I'll be back on Tinder bar sundown. Anyway, <clears throat> about an hour later we're at A&E, &E, right? Uh, because... <laughs> The problem with the phrase blood in the urine, I mean, that implies there was urine in it, you know. And this was rich stuff, fellas. Like, I could have walked into a blood bank, whipped it out and started giving the real healthy stuff. And uh, A&E's rammed and I put my name down, but then I get called within like a minute. So there's some serious stink eye. Everyone's like, who are you? I've been here all afternoon. But then I have to walk back past the waiting area with my urine sample that at this stage is a stick of celery away from a Bloody Mary. And... <laughs> You can see everyone go, oh, that does look after you, mate. I will wait. <laughs> hmm. Now, trauma-induced prostatitis. That was the verdict. And I told the doc about the spinning, and he was like, well, that'll do it, but your prostate would need to be enlarged had there been any sexual activity. Now, <clears throat> I had been on one of my first dates since the breakup the night before. Uh, anyway, she stayed over and gave me a hand job in the morning. But you know when you're talking to a doctor, you want to use, like, science words. <laughs> you know, the doctor asks if you've been having sex, you don't just come out with it like, oh, yeah, I've been crushing pussy all night, doc. Oh, for God's sakes, come on. The man's a scholar. <laughs> you don't darken his door, that filth, eh? You keep it clean. You say, oh, yeah, I had full consenting intercourse with a, a fair maiden, you know, but... <laughs> well, I'd not had sex, you see, and I didn't know what the technical term was for getting jacked off by some chick off Bumble. So I just said masturbation, and he was like, all right, but then I was like, but not me, a girl did it, and he was like, it doesn't matter, mate. And I was like, no, no, it definitely does matter. Like, I didn't wait till I came blood. That's not what happened. She did it. She did it. Fill out a police report. That two-bit bumble witch ripped my dick off, man. <laughs> He's like, please stop shouting. It doesn't matter. Now, mm. you're going to come back here to get two procedures, right? First procedure, you're going to send a camera about that long in through the hole in the end of your penis all the way to your bladder. The second procedure is a prostate exam done by hand going in through the anus. He then said, Mr. Taylor, have you got any objections to these procedures happening on the same day? <laughs> I was like, same day, fuck it, doc, same time, get in there! <laughs> Pincer movement, the old boy, huh? Join the dots. <laughs> I, I don't want you to stop until I can see the finger up my ass through the camera you've shoved up my cockhole. Huh? <laughs> That's why I pay my fucking taxes, mate. Huh? <laughs> get in there. Breakup wasn't too bad though, you know, it healed pretty quickly. It healed pretty quickly. No, the breakup was all right because it was a very middle class relationship, you know? So it, it, it was very nice, but it wasn't very fun, you know? You know what I'm talking about, Melbourne. It was numbingly pleasant. That's how I describe a middle class relationship. I do get jealous of more working class, I guess you'd call them bogan relationships. I feel like it must be more exciting just because the adrenaline, you know, scratch cards, bankruptcy, meth. I mean, there's so much going on, you know? Holy <laughs> lot. What a roller coaster, but we used to get into arguments at farmers markets, me and my ex. You know, I remember this one time we were at a farmers market and it was cash only and we only had a fiver. And she wanted to spend it on this like handcrafted coconut milk soap. And I wanted to get in the car and just plow through every stall. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, then we went to a vintage furniture shop. Uh, yeah, because there really are only so many things that white people can do on a Sunday. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Melbourne, yeah? <laughs> Brunch, farmer's market, vintage furniture shop, independent cinema. Mm, yes, please. Yes, please. 
What a honky Sunday. <laughs> Just kind of pottering about. Oh, I fucking love pottering, right? <laughs> If you don't know, pottering's a very white activity. It's when you're in town, but you're not doing anything specific, you're just sort of pottering, right? <laughs> but only if you're white, I must stress. If you're not white, that's not called pottering, it's called loitering, <laughs> which is a crime. <laughs> not fair, is it? Have you noticed there are these words that change meaning depending on what race you are? It kind of proves that white people have it a bit easier in life, you know, pottering, loitering. If I move abroad, I'm an expat. Mm. Sounds lovely, but if I'm not white, I'm an immigrant. Boo! You know, it's mean, right? It's mean. What's another one? Dabbling? That's a very white word, isn't it? A word you only really hear white people say, you know. Do you play the piano? Well, I dabble. Uh, I think it basically means, no, but I am white, so I can do anything. I think it's a weird time in society because I think the political left is trying to make you feel guilty for being for being white. And I'm not sure how useful that is, you know? I think, you mean, you shouldn't feel proud about being white. I, I don't need to tell Australia that. But the... Uh, <laughs> but I don't know how useful it is feeling guilty. I think it's a healthy middle ground between the two, you know? Like, uh, I have an African-American friend and he came over to London and I was showing him round and we end up watching this blues band, right? And the blues band is five British white guys and he kicks off, he's like, oh, this is bullshit. This is cultural appropriation. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, it's blues. It evolved out of the songs that African slaves would sing in the fields. These guys are white and British. They don't get that shit. It's cultural appropriation because blues is inherently a black art form because of slavery. And I was listening to that thinking, well, yeah, mate, but as a white British man, you've got to admit, like, we had something to do with that as well. Like, I mean... <laughs> you didn't enslave yourselves. We're the cunts that did it. I mean, you... You take white people out of that equation, you don't get blues music, do you? <laughs> yeah, look at you go, no, no, blues. It's important, isn't it? Because blues is the root of everything. It evolves into jazz, which evolves into gospel, soul, funk, disco, hip hop, rap. You could almost say, couldn't you, that if it wasn't for white people. <laughs> It would be terrible, wouldn't it? It'd be awful. <laughs> Man, on that bombshell, I will leave. Thank you so much. My name is Finn. Enjoy the rest of your